video on these German pancakes from forever ago. They're the ones I make for the family. They're um, grain free because they're made with either sweet potato flour or arrowroot starch, arrowroot flour. Um, so they're grain free, kind of paleo-ish, but definitely not low carb. But it's a great way to use up lots of eggs because we got tons of eggs right now from our chickens. <laughs> This is my breakfast this morning. These are leftover Hawaiian sweet rolls uh, that I made from Amy Carnivore Angel's recipe. I give these a 10 out of 10 for sure. So, so good. The excitement of the morning around here is that uh, Jeff just got a new riding lawnmower. An old John Deere riding lawnmower came with our house and uh, it lasted us a year, which was great, but it finally stopped running and Jeff couldn't get it going yesterday, so. He got a new riding lawnmower, and the kids are having fun helping him put that together this morning. Let me put in there. What? Let me put in there. Put what in where? Put the bacon in there. Oh, I didn't put the bacon with the eggs because I didn't want it to get egg on it. What do you think of that bacon? Yummy. Oh, good. All right, Charity, what's your amazing breakfast? Bacon, eggs, and German pancakes with whipped cream. That's part of a balanced breakfast right there. All right, so I have the German pancakes and the bacon cooking. I'm just going through batches in the kitchen here. That's usually the way it is on Sunday mornings is I do a huge breakfast and have lots of leftovers for the rest of the week. Uh, but usually I'm not finished cooking all of those until like lunchtime. So that's where we're at right now. Um, but we got sent a gift box from the Pork King Good Company. And um, you guys know, if you've watched me a while, I love their products they have all kinds of yummy things and their flavors are just over the top delicious you can probably hear the lawnmower outside my husband's having fun with that new lawnmower and even talia got to drive it so it's very exciting anyway so they sent me this awesome care package gift gift box and uh, renee doesn't know what it's in here yet i i already peeked but um we're gonna unbox it for you and show you what's in here and i am planning on using some of the things in here for my food prep today all right, are you ready, Renee? <gasps> what is it? Pork rinds. Pork rinds. All right, so they make all the amazing pork rind flavors. The one on top here is salted butter. Yum. Oh, this is one of your favorites, I know. Yeah. 
salt and vinegar. These are so good. And a lot of their, yeah, you can share. A lot of their um, pork rind flavors are, have dairy in them, so I haven't been eating a lot of them, uh, which makes me terribly sad. But the salt and vinegar one, definitely dairy free, so I'm still indulging in that one. This All right. one's my, one of my favorite kinds, it's pickle. Oh no, that one's sour cream and onion. Oh. Yeah, there's not a pickle one in here, but it's a good thing yeah. we have some pickle ones downstairs. I thought it was pickle. Yeah, because it's green, but it says onion and sour cream. Yeah. Onion, oh, there is something pickle flavor in here, though. I'll show you in a minute. All right. White cheddar. White cheddar is super good. Nacho cheddar. And then also their ranch. So, so good. Love the ranch. And then there's pepperoni pizza. You want to show it? This one's pickle uh, seasoning. Dill pickle seasoning. This is so good. This is switch. one we've never had before. We've had some of their seasonings, but this one we've never tried. The smoky jalapeno and cheese. That would be really good on popcorn. This one is Renee's favorite. She loves yeah. this one on popcorn. And then, oh, I've never tried this one, but I really want to. It's their taco seasoning. Their seasoning combinations are just so good. Every, like, every flavor just pops like crazy. Seasoning salt. Their seasoning salt is really good, and it's really different from other seasoning salts because I have the Redmond seasoned salt and this is just completely different so don't feel like you're getting you know double of the same thing because they just taste incredibly different and delicious. Oh what's that one? I don't know. Wait. Onion and sour cream. sour cream. An onion and sour cream. I love onion Yum. And sour cream. We've That's never tried this seasoning before. The kids will love that. And bacon. You love bacon. Yeah. And what's the last one? Oh, this Something one is bigger. so good. This one is great on wings. It's great on anything. The kids um, love it on their, when they make homemade air fryer french fries. So good. All right, now this is the last two yeah. things I sent. This is, I'm planning on using some of these today for my food prep. Pork rind crumbs. They sent the Cajun, which I've never tried. I'm super excited about that. And then the original. And they have some other flavors. It's like they have, um, what is it, ranch, ranch flavored pork rinds. So you can do like fried chicken with ranch flavor. Oh my gosh, they have an Italian flavor I've never tried. Um, this is original, but then they also have an unflavored too as well. I have some chicken tenders in the fridge that need to be used and I'm gonna make some pork rind crusted chicken tenders for lunch today gonna be so good. I actually got started on my food prep early this week. Uh, night before last we had a fire in the fire pit, our first one of the year really, and I got out the grate that goes over the fire pit and once we had some nice coals I smoked up and grilled up some wings and some thighs and we did some burgers as well but those got eaten up really fast but these are all prepped and i've been eating on these yesterday i think i had them for two different meals they're so good nice and smoky so that is already done but i did have those um chicken tenderloins in the fridge that need to get used up and i'm going to do some air fryer chicken strips chicken tenders chicken fingers with those so i'm going to do something uh, a little different with these normally making chicken strips i would use like an egg plus a milk or coconut milk uh, mixture for the wet dip and then have the pork rinds for the dry dip and of course you could add um Parmesan cheese into these too, that would be delicious. But I'm gonna keep it dairy free by doing coconut milk and doing no cheese. But um, my son is allergic to eggs, he cannot eat eggs at all. And so I want him to be able to eat some of these. I've already made enough things with eggs this morning. I don't wanna make another egg recipe that he can't eat. So I'm gonna keep it dairy free, uh, but I'm gonna play off the experimenting I was doing last week and try just doing some coconut milk plus some gelatin um, dissolved into the coconut milk to make it thick. That's my German pancake that's ready back there. Um, just gonna see how that works because you know normally you would have the egg mixed with some kind of a milk or a cream and that would you know make it pretty thick. Ooh, my coconut milk is kind of chunky. Um, but I'm gonna try just doing the a little bit of gelatin in there, see what it does. If nothing else, it'll add a little bit of protein. I'm gonna heat this up a little bit to get the chunks out. So I think I'm just gonna try a one tablespoon of gelatin over the top of this. I'll let it um, 
just moisten up and then whisk it together and that'll be good enough. So for the pork rinds, I think I'm gonna actually do a mixture of the original and the Cajun because I want to taste the Cajun and the spice of it, but I don't, I want the kids to like it too. So I don't want it to be too spicy. So I think if I do a 50-50 mix between the two, that would be good. Um, so the original one, um, it does have spice in it and flavor and salt. So I don't have to worry about um, spicing this up at all. It's just all ready to go, which is wonderful. Oh, that smells so good. Very Cajun-y. All right, that's close to a 50-50 split between the two. I'm gonna just mix that up. You have a chicken. Don't shoot at me. Oh my goodness. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Levi just shot a chicken at me. I'm gonna shoot a chicken at you. I would not like to get this in my food, young man. Got you. So Charity, do you remember when you were little, like maybe Levi's age or a little, stop shooting me with the chicken. <laughs> you stinker. I, you were maybe a little bit older than Levi and we were making chicken strips and you saw the raw chicken tenderloins why you gotta shoot me with the chicken, man? <laughs> do you remember what you said the chicken tenderloins look like? Yes, I do. What did you say? I called them squirbs. Squirbs? And what what did you mean when you said squirbs? I do you remember what you were remember. what you thought they looked like? You okay? So she thought they looked like squid pieces, like pieces of squid, but she couldn't remember the name for squid, so she called them squirbs. And then ever since then, whenever we make chicken tenders and we have raw chicken, you have another chicken? I have one right here. How did you find another one? Oh my goodness. It's turkey. So now ever since then, when we make chicken strips and we have the raw chicken, we call them squirbs. All because of charity. Why, why you, oh no. <laughs> You mini pants. You, <laughs> hey, you just shot all our friends from YouTube. I'm gonna shoot you. Yeah. I'm gonna whisk this up a little bit. I might need to heat it up a little bit more to get this um, gelatin to, to dissolve. It kind of, kind of clumped. So I don't know if the gelatin's gonna make any difference at all, but I did let this cool down a little bit because I don't wanna put hot coconut milk onto the raw chicken. So it is cool and I'm going to pour it on here, get these all coated and then one by one I will dip them in to the pork rinds. So this recipe actually works really well as a freezer recipe. If you um, just get everything coated and then dipped and then you lay it on a pan, like a parchment paper lined pan then put it in the freezer, let them freeze like in a single layer, and then you take them off and put them into a freezer Ziploc bag. You can pull out, you know, a couple at a time or however many to um, make your dinner. And it is perfect. Actually, I think they even cook better from frozen than from fresh because they um, don't get dried out as fast because it takes longer to defrost, but it still has enough time for the outside to get really crispy. So I'll kind of see how many I cook here for lunch because I know everybody's gonna want some. Um, if there's some extra, I might freeze whatever is left. So I can see that the um, coconut milk and gelatin on the chicken, once it got onto this cold chicken, it's kind of gelling up a little bit and actually it's working pretty well. Uh, so it's more like an egg would cling to the chicken because it's thicker. I got five chicken strips in my little bitty air fryer. I think I'll probably cook them about eight minutes. Um, they're gonna cook really fast and I don't want them to get dried out inside. All right, while those ones are cooking, we're gonna get the rest breaded and Charity's gonna be my helper. You can say hi. Hello. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna grab the squirb. Squirb. And throw it into the breading and I'll coat it. I feel weird. And I know. I'll do it and I'll coat it and then I'll put it on the pan here and we'll either throw them in the air fryer or throw them in the freezer depending on how far we get. Ready? Good.
I'm gonna throw the rest of these in the freezer for another day and I have these ones all cooked. I just did three batches in my small air fryer. Definitely um, having the cheese in the breading helps them to stay crispier, but the flavor of these is absolutely incredible. Renee wanted to try one of the chicken strips and she, what did you want to try on it? Um, sour cream and onion. She just wants to put some of the seasoning on there. She doesn't want a sauce or anything. She just wants to, do you want to like have a little bit on the side that you dip it into or just uh, sprinkle it on top? I want to dip it in the, oh, I have an idea. How we put some of it in a little bowl? Okay. Here, you put that in the bowl and let's get you one of these chicken strips and you can do a quick taste test. Oh my goodness. I think that's good, right? Sure. All right, you ready? Yeah. Go for it. I really like it. Yeah? Try try some of the chicken strip without the um, dip of okay. the seasoning and see what you think. I still like it. You still like it. And then this, the salt, um, sour cream and onion makes it even better. Onion and sour mm -hmm. cream makes it even better. All right. I need water. Oh yeah, because mm -hmm. it's pretty salty. Here, take this. Okay. And you can go eat your lunch and get your water. I'm going to make a little bit of a dip um, for some, for me, for my lunch. I'm going to just use some avocado oil mayo. I don't have any homemade mayo at the moment, even though it is super easy to make. I don't need very much. I might want to thin this down a little bit with maybe some vinegar and I'm just I wanted to try the uh, taco seasoning because I've never tried it before so I'm gonna just put that in there and make a creamy taco dip well I guess I'm out of apple cider vinegar so I'm just gonna do a drip of lemon juice to thin it out All right, let me give this a little bit of a taste test here. Ooh, yum. I just finished it. Was it good? Mm hmm mm. So good. There's just a little bit of a kick from all the different spices, but it's not too spicy. I don't like it too spicy, but it's really, really yummy. So got a bunch of bacon left over, which, you know, is totally unusual. To have leftover bacon. Um, I found that I have to cook like four or five pounds of bacon in order to get any leftover if I want to like meal prep it. Um, I still have, there's still a lot in here. So I was thinking I'd just leave this on the counter until enough is eaten that I can put the lid on. And that will be how much I save for the rest of the week. I got the kids a bunch of German pancakes uh, for the week that they'll be able to munch on. These will probably get eaten here in the next couple of hours uh, by everyone, but I also have that pan in the freezer. Once they're frozen solid, I will put them into a Ziploc bag and that'll be nice to grab, you know, a few out at a time as needed. I have a whole bunch of bacon grease saved even beyond my bacon grease container. Oh, there it is. I have my bacon grease container is still full over here. I think I need to do more recipe experimenting with like uh, the deep frying like I was doing last week because I have a lot of bacon grease to do that with now. But I feel like I've had a pretty productive day and with the chicken that I had already prepped from a couple days ago, I think I am set. Oh, I did also want to show you my fridge because I cleaned it last night. <laughs> I don't show you my fridge very often because it's usually filthy, but I actually cleaned it last night. So I'll give you a quick fridge tour here. Autumn made some homemade ranch. She's trying to eat lower carb these days just to feel a little bit better and have more energy. So she's been working on some low carb recipes, which is exciting. Pickles that are Talia's favorite. This is some of my um, parfait, like I showed you in the short video um, a week or two ago. But um, I used a blue raspberry electrolyte mix that I got on Amazon. I think it's like Key Elements or something like that. I didn't like the electrolyte drink as a drink, and so I thought I'd try it as a parfait um, jello. I still don't really care for it. It's kind of bummed because it was cheaper. Um, let's see, all kinds of condiments like olives and peppers and things back here. Sour cream, half and half, some of our eggs. I used up so many today that we're actually running low, but I bet if I walked out to the chicken run, I could get some out there. Uh, that chicken I showed you, the kids rice. 
Oh, this is some more of those um, crepe noodles that I showed you in my What I Eat in a Day video from the other day. Let's see, anything else exciting? That's the leftover fried eggs from this morning. This is some Jell-O. Um, Levi was watching me make the parfait and that has the egg whites in it and he wanted some Jell-O with no eggs and so I made him some Jell-O with no eggs. That's it. Just other random stuff back here. Bacon crumbles from Costco. Yogurt. This is the cheese drawer apparently, plus cabbage in the back. Uh, baby bell cheese and cheese sticks for the kids. Veggies, drawer, all kinds of different things in here. I got some ripe avocados that need to be used. Cheese and meat drawer. Got my beef biltong in here. I love that for taking when I'm going out. Different sliced cheese, um, Polish sausages, the Teton Waters Ranch sausages, pepperoni, salami. And then, of course, I have my RX syrups up here. I have all the different flavors, uh, and they're delicious. Some other random things, butter, Parmesan cheese, different condiments, a variety of dairy, a variety of mustards, more condiments, coconut aminos, salsa, fish sauce, Frank's Red Hot Sauce, teriyaki sauce that my husband uses, and I think that's about it, but just had to show off my clean refrigerator. Hi, my name is Charity, and today I'm making chocolate chip cookies for my class. And one of my one of my friends in my class is allergic to gluten. So we're using cassava flour, and the reason I'm making them is because my birthday is in two days, and... How old are you turning? I'm turning nine. Now let's get started. This recipe is from MyNaturalFamily.com, and we'll link it in the, the description. Alright, so I'm going to put this down like this. Room temperature. You making it? You know what time lapse is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Go, like, speeding it up? Uh-huh. Thank you. 